Welcome to prayers on the 28th of January. My name is Nick Blundell, one of the ministers working with the 14 churches in the Methodist circuit of North Bradford. I'm glad to, you're able to join us for, for prayers. One of my idiosyncrasies over the years has been that when a service finishes that I'm leading, the first thing I do is always go outside, uh, take a breath of fresh air and, uh, and, and look around. It's not just about that breath of fresh air. It's not just about relief that the sense of the service going okay is, 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 is there. Um, but it's part of something I, I learned when I was in college. The, the principal at that time, Reverend Richard Jones, Dick, uh, always used to say that we ought to say the blessing at the end of the service on our feet, almost on the move, uh, on the way out, uh, ready to, to go and, uh, and do the things we've been talking about uh, in in worship. There's a prayer at the end of the Methodist uh, service and he said we should be saying this as we were walking. Uh, Go in peace in the power of the Spirit to live and work to God's praise and glory and we say thanks be to God as we move out. One of the churches in uh, Cheshire where I was before I came to Bradford uh, had a, a great little graveyard just outside the, the front door. Uh, so you came out and the first thing you saw was the gravestones and the one that you saw most readily uh, had a, an, ep- an epi- epitaph on it. He kept plodding on. He kept plodding on. I always wondered about the story of the person, the man who was the one who kept plodding on. Um, but in our prayers today, that's kind of going to be our theme in this time of uh, continuing COVID, continuing restrictions, a light at the end of the tunnel that seems a long way away and we're not quite sure when it is and where it is. Uh, The theme of our prayers today, keep plodding on. Let's journey into our prayer time by way of today's psalm. Psalm 69 verses 13 to 18. But I pray to you, Lord, in the time of your favour, in your great love, O God, answer me with your sure salvation. Rescue me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Deliver me from those who hate me from the deep waters. Do not let the flood water engulf me, or the depths swallow me up, or the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, Lord, out of the goodness of your love. In your great mercy turn to me. Do not hide your face from your servant. Answer me quickly, for I am in trouble. Come near and rescue me. Deliver me because of my foes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. These are difficult days to keep plodding on through. Infections are still rising. Hospitals close to being overwhelmed. Restrictions are still limiting social contact. Separation from loved ones is so hard. We continue to miss the cuddles of loved ones. And one day can feel so much like another. For some, these days are days of tedium, isolation, lack of purpose. For others, they're days and nights of exhaustion and pressure, and a sense of reaching one's limit. For all, there is anxiety, and for many, there is loss. We see light at the end of the tunnel in the form of the vaccine, and the rollout of the vaccine is encouraging, yet it's uncertain how soon it will have its effects. It's uncertain when things will change, and the uncertainty, I guess, can be crippling. We're going to spend some time now uh, in prayer, partly with words and partly with quietness, thinking about some of the folks who are needing to keep plodding on. We'll use a verse from the psalm as a bidding and response. When I say, do not hide your face from your servant, we respond, answer me quickly, for I am in trouble. Do not hide your face from your servant. Answer me quickly, for I am in trouble. Let us pray.
Let us pray for those for whom each day is much the same as the day before and the day to come. Struggling with the repetition. Struggling with the limitations in terms of activity and particularly in terms of contact with loved ones. Feeling perhaps isolated, alone, lacking the purpose that normal social contact gives to us. For some it will be uh, older folks missing grandchildren. For some it will be grandchildren missing grandparents. For many, our friendships are the things that uh, sustain us and those friendships are being limited by our not being able to visit one another's homes. Let's take a little bit of time in quietness now to be praying for those in that situation, those situations of isolation and loneliness. Lord, we pray blessing on those we have brought to mind. We ask that you help us to be part of your answer to our prayers in terms of our contact with one another, the messages we might send, the gifts we might give, even within the limitations of these days. And we ask that you might draw close to those who are, who are alone, to those who sense and feel isolated, to those who are lacking purpose. Draw close and bless, and let your love be known. Do not hide your face from your servant. Answer me quickly, for I am in trouble. We pray now for those who are exhausted, under pressure, close to experiencing that sense of reaching one's limit or going beyond it. So we pray for those working in our hospitals and in primary care and in care homes. People putting themselves at risk and people carrying heavy loads, stretched, caring for more in more difficult circumstance. with our carers and health professionals. We pray for those others who are doing jobs that need to be done, that we need them to do for us. So those working in uh, production, distribution, retail, enabling supermarket uh, shelves to be stocked. For those keeping the streets safe and clean and clear. For those enabling power to, to flow, lights to be on, houses to be warm. And for those whose contribution to society through communication and entertainment has an important va value in lifting spirits. For those who are caring in voluntary capacities, working with, uh, with food banks and debt centres, working as volunteers within neighbourhoods, doing shopping for those who are vulnerable, and for those who are facilitating the vaccine programme, for those in authority about whom we like to complain but who carry a burden of responsibility and for whom we pray wisdom and guidance in their decision-making. Take a few moments in quietness to be praying for those who are exhausted, under pressure 
reaching their limit. Lord God, we pray that when our strength is gone, you might draw close and sustain us. We pray that you might be close to those under pressure, that even in the midst of pressure there might be a glimpse of your peace, a breath of your peace. And we pray that as folks come to the end of their limits, they might find fresh energy in your love and might experience that love in the care of colleagues and friends. Do not hide your face from your servant. Answer me quickly, for I am in trouble. We pray for ourselves and for one another. In the anxieties that we carry, in the losses that we have experienced. We pray for those who are ill, for those who are grieving, for those who are afraid, and for those without purpose. We pray that God will draw close and refresh and renew take a moment in quietness to pray for, for ourselves and those who are in our hearts. Lord, we offer you all that we carry, all that burdens us, and we ask the strength and help of your Spirit that we might keep plodding on. Do not hide your face from your servant. Answer me quickly, for I am in trouble. And we bring our prayers together as we pray the prayer that Jesus prays, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen as we determine to keep plodding on, some words from St. Paul from the first chapter of 2 Corinthians. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, 
It is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. Thanks be to God. We're going to close our prayers today with a hymn I, I, I can't remember when I last chose. It's a hymn that usually raises questions for me, uh, too uh, militaristic, militant uh, in, in many ways, the language is of a, uh, a bygone age. But if we use this hymn that talks about war, recognising that we're not called to be at war with other people, but there is a sense that there's a battle going on with ourselves, there's a battle going on with the circumstances that we that we face. There's a battle going on with a virus. Um, then maybe maybe it's a, a helpful hymn uh, to close with. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching us to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. <laughs>